fellow adventurers, welcome to the Gobstopper Adventures channel. Today we are going to be upgrading a CPU on my mining rig. So first thing, we're going to turn off the power. I also recommend unplugging the power. I also after rec recommend after unplugging the power would be to hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds to make sure you do not get shocked. Um, I did not do that. Needless to say, I did not get shocked either, so don't hold your breath and hope I get shocked here. Uh, I did not get shocked. <clears throat> so first thing, uh, before we upgrade the CPU, we're going to unplug all the cables, make sure that I can actually get to the CPU here. Now, the reason that I am doing a CPU upgrade is because the motherboard here, the Rock Strix uh, B450F Gaming 2 motherboard needed a BIOS update prior to being able to install a newer gen processor. So I am currently taking off the Athlon 200 GE with Radeon Vega graphics. It's a two core, four thread processor, uh, 3.2 gigahertz. <clears throat> this was the cheapest that I could find on Amazon that would allow me to update the BIOS so that I could put my new processor on. So after we get all the cables unplugged on this, you want to unhook the tension rod. Prior to doing that, I'd also recommend to unplug the cable. It does get in the way. It just makes things simpler. So these are things that I've learned uh, just by doing this the the first time here <laughs> that this this is the first time of what you're witnessing in this video <clears throat> so it does require a little pressure um, especially if you if you're removing a heat sink that's been used uh, that's been heated up uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a seal so you're gonna have to crack that seal uh, so just be careful not to damage your motherboard during that so be pretty careful while you're pulling the heat sink and fan combo off. At this point I would recommend cleaning off everything uh, like your your the, your CPU and your fan heat sink especially if you're gonna put it in a box. Um, I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna be putting this CPU directly in another uh, computer so I pretty much just set everything aside here now if you guys are interested in seeing the BIOS update for this motherboard uh, let me know down in the comments I believe I actually have that recorded so uh, if you guys would like me to upload it uh, just let me know down in the comments So you're going to release the locking bar uh, that's on the motherboard that holds the AM4 chipset in. You're going to lift it up and then the CPU should come right out pretty easily. So what I'm going to be putting on this is the Ryzen 5 uh, 5000 series processor. Uh, it's the Ryzen 5 5600G with Radeon graphics. Um, it's a 6 core, 12 thread processor, 4.4 gigahertz uh, max boost, and 3.9 gigahertz base. So this processor is boostable. Um, 
or overclockable, I guess, if you will. You can overclock this this uh, CPU. I don't I don't really have it overclocked at all. Uh, I'm I'm not super comfortable overclocking. So if you guys have some good tips on overclocking, again, throw it down in the comments. Super interested to read that. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about actually overclocking on the CPU. Um, I do have it kind of set to the factory standards, uh, which it is performing a little better than the actual 3.9 gigahertz base. So when we're putting this new processor in, one thing I want to point out is the arrow on the bottom left corner of the CPU will line up with an arrow on the motherboard. So that's something that you need to make sure that you line up and then it's the reverse process as it was removing the CPU. You're going to drop down the locking bar and lock it in place. And here's where you would do one of two things. Um, if you're applying a new heat sink, this is where you would not need thermal paste but if you are going to apply a used heat sink that's already been used in another computer uh, you want to clean off the existing thermal paste and apply new thermal paste next I'm going to remove these brackets that come on I believe most standard AM4 chipset motherboards These are the brackets that attach the, uh, I guess the the more standard AM4 uh, chipset CPUs. Uh, I believe the, I guess higher um, AMD Ryzen CPUs come with an upgraded heat sink that screw directly into the bracket that runs underneath the motherboard. So it attaches differently so you don't have a need for these brackets so if you do have these brackets attached you'll have to go through the same steps as I am here and remove these uh, brackets and I do recommend laying this motherboard flat I didn't do that uh, hindsight being 2020 I, I would have done that I would have taken the standoffs off the motherboard standoffs from the bottom and laid this motherboard flat uh, then I wouldn't have had to deal with uh, trying to hold up the bracket that free hangs. It's the screws that run through the CPU uh, heat sink and fan that attach to the so bracket. Before you guys roast me down in the comments, keep it uh, held together. As you guys um, see, this kind of sandwiches these the motherboard. Two old uh, uh, graphic so cards, the GTX 960 and the GTX 760. Just laid this flat. Uh, um, both of them are less than uh, four gig did, graphic cards. Uh, um, so I am using here. This was my first so mining rig here. I thought this, this the whole purpose of this, this mining rig was to would be enough see if I. Um, could figure out how to do the whole mining bracket, thing, but it was um, a little irritating. So one thing so that I, I pointed out here in the video so, is um, this was a new heat sink, so it came with thermal mistakes. paste already pre-applied, so no need for me to apply thermal paste. <clears throat> yeah, so with this uh, mining rig, uh, I was actually mining a couple altcoins. Um, if you guys are interested in that uh, mining with lower uh, than four gig graphic cards what coins to mine uh, things like that let me know down in the comments super interested to hear if any of you guys are, are mining with some of the uh, I guess you'd say less profitable altcoins right now just to see see what happens maybe they go up in the future So uh, as you're reattaching the fan, you want to make sure to thread screw screw the screws down into the threads evenly. 
So you want to once you get one started, and there are springs on the screws, so there is pressure pressing back against you. So you do have to depress the spring as you're trying to screw uh, into the threads. <clears throat> So you do want to work your way around and you don't want to tighten one side all the way up or one s screw all the way up uh, while the other ones are still loose. Uh, you want to tighten them all up evenly um, <clears throat> and work your way around or uh, what, I, what I chose to do was to kind of bounce diagonally uh, for the most part after getting all the screws started and then um, tighten it in in a diagonal um, and then moving around in a clockwise sort of fashion so after I got all the screws started then I removed the bracket that was holding it or the box that was holding the bracket up since all the screws are started the screws are actually holding the the bracket up at this point so now I'm using my hand on the other side to put pressure uh, to hold it up through the bottom. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, if you guys are, uh, for you miners uh, or interested miners, if you guys are interested in where to get information uh, on what altcoins to mine, if you do have older graphic cards, you can mine. Uh, cryptocurrency with them you can't mine ethereum uh, which ethereum will be moving to a proof of stake so you can only mine ethereum for a, a limited time uh, but those are w going to be with larger than four gig graphic cards at this point I believe uh, I don't think the algorithms I know at one point even after the uh, DAG file got bigger than four gigs there were some algorithms that were able to allow four gigs to continue to mine on ethereum but i don't know if that's still the case uh i believe at this point all all cards have to be above the four gig um file size so i do have some interesting uh, or exciting upgrades coming for this exact rig. This is the very first upgrade of, of many that I've made to this rig so far. And all the plastic pieces that you see that I have attached to the PSU over there uh, the bracket that I have holding that in place that was 3d printed um, if you, as well as the motherboard standoffs uh, I don't know in this video that you actually see that uh, the motherboard is not laying flat on this metal metal rack here that is not the case uh, I'm pretty sure something would get fried or or something would short uh, I, I, I don't think that's a good idea to lay it across the metal rack here um, especially without some type of buffer so I do have 3d printed standoffs that are running underneath the motherboard here that holds it I guess about an inch or an inch and a half up uh, off of this metal rack and all of these uh, GPU brackets that you see hanging or hang, with the hanging GPUs here um, as well as the uh, solid state drive that I have there uh, they're all being hung with uh, GPU hangers that I also 3D printed if you guys are interested in some 3D printing content uh, any, you got any 3D printing fans out there let me know down in the comments that is something that I plan on bringing to the channel pretty soon 
getting this mining rig uh, all set up and learning the mining rig process uh, has been been a pretty fun process and has been one of my major hobbies right now so most of the videos that I will have coming soon will be oriented more towards uh, all of the upgrades that I have done to this mining rig like I said don't don't roast me too bad down in the comments with uh, with these old old uh, GPUs here like I said this was all part of just learning learning how to get a, a mining rig set up uh, with this mining rig I did set it up with Hive OS uh, at first I, I was trying to do it on Windows uh, I do not recommend trying to mine on Windows I ran into a ton of issues um, it didn't work out well for me I, I, I had problem after problem I'd never I mined for maybe 30 seconds on Windows um, and I, I tried for three weeks and couldn't get it to work there were driver errors um, probably installing too many GPUs on it it just couldn't handle um, plus the mi mix match I was using some old cards so uh, learned a lot in this whole process so now uh, now that we have everything uh, reattached here uh, reconnect the fan connector uh, we're gonna reconnect the CPU pins we're gonna reconnect the motherboard pin in the back make sure the heart the SATA hard drives plugged in and I do apologize for the angle that I have here on my GoPro during the video uh, you probably noticed that I bumped it on the rack and it got a little high so I do apologize that you guys aren't looking at the exact angle that I am uh, but for the most part I, I hope that you guys can learn from this video and especially learn from my mistakes because I've made plenty uh, getting all of this set up and actually getting it up and running so now that we have everything reconnected repowered flip the switch Something I want to point out real quick is, um, as I power this on, um, I'm plugging a HDMI cable directly into the motherboard, and that is because I have a CPU with integrated graphics. Um, if you don't have a computer with integrated graphics, so once this starts booting uh, up, you will not be able uh, to plug it directly. Every motherboard into, is different, but you want to find uh, your motherboard. You'll have to use a and GPU. For for this um, instance, I'm using uh, this it solely for mining. So and because I was having I, had some issues I just performed learning the BIOS how to update, get everything me with the second up screen without uh, to press F1. Uh, I believe to go into CPU the BIOS that screen has integrated graphics. So it, here in the BIOS screen. I'm going to go through and I'm going to make some changes that are specifically for mining. If you're not setting your computer up for mining, I don't recommend to copy my settings here. If you're setting your computer if or if you're setting up a mining rig and you're using this motherboard and um that's all you're planning on using it for then yeah by all means copy my settings here because uh, these settings do work well for me <clears throat> and 
and in my other videos as I do updates uh, I don't believe I've changed any, any of these settings since the initial setup with the upgrades that I have done I have added I've taken I hate to I hate to spoil it for you guys but so there will be some videos coming um, with upgrades that I do take these two old GPUs off and I am running this motherboard or this setup right now with four GPUs uh, with no issues. I do plan to add another one um, as well as build another rig and uh, we got a lot of cool cool updates coming for you soon. So don't want to give too much away and spoil any of the other videos for you guys. So a couple settings you do want to be sure to uh, turn on uh, are typically within your PCI settings uh, you want to make sure that you choose the uh, above 4G decoding uh, and make sure that all your PCI uh, slots are on if your motherboard has where you are able to turn off and turn on the PCI slots individually and if you're using a hard drive uh, you do want to make sure that you have all of your um, SATA ports that you are plugging hard drives into uh, you want to make sure that you have those turned on as well So something that I have a tendency to do is I will, after I make changes within a BIOS, and it's probably just because I've ran into so many issues with faulty motherboards, um, I will immediately re-enter the BIOS to make sure that the settings were saved before allowing the computer to do a full startup. So we have lights on, I see it booting up. So once it gives me the screen, we're going to go right back into the BIOS. As I did forget one thing that I meant to change, I did want to change the CPU. Uh, settings or let me uh, I wanted to change the CPU fan settings I did want to make sure that the motherboard uh, had the CPU heat sink and fan um, properly calibrated which this step may be a little overkill but just something that I wanted to do to make sure that the smart settings within the uh, motherboard and CPU uh, combo were working properly and that it calibrated properly Like I said, this step may be a little overkill, but it takes about 30 seconds and it gives me a little peace of mind.
So after this step, we are going to go back over to the mining rig. And then we're going to start plugging the GPUs in uh, and allow it to boot up into Hive OS. One thing that I typically do like to do uh, after saving all the changes in the BIOS is to allow it to boot up into Hive OS anytime I'm making major changes within a mining rig what I do is hook up things very individually or very slowly so I'll start it up and power it down or start it up and allow it to refresh Some sometimes reboots are required just depending on the situation so right now I want to see if it'll boot up in the Hive OS I want to see if the BIOS settings that I changed would allow it to boot up into Hive OS um, I can see that it just started booting up into Hive OS so perfect so what that means is that the motherboard is at least communicating with the hard drive so we're gonna power the rig off um, I also recommend disconnecting the power um, I didn't do that I honestly didn't care if these GPUs got fried <laughs> they're so old um, like I said the, these GPUs serve their purpose their purpose was pretty much a, a teaching aid I didn't want to invest a lot in GPUs while I was trying to learn the process of setting up a mining rig so this was a very cheap build of a mining rig The initial bones of it, I'll say that. The initial bones of this uh, this mining rig was pretty cheap. Um, it, it, it got a lot more expensive, as you guys will see. So, now we're going to power it back up. Uh, we're going to let it boot back into Hive OS. Um, because the image file in Hive OS, I already had these two... These two... Uh, GPUs on this image um, I'm hoping that I can connect these two GPUs back the same way that I had them with the other processor um, and that it will only recognize the processor change and that it will uh, see that the other two uh, are unchanged so it'll update the the processor and uh, it'll leave the other two which is exactly what happened. Uh, it was able to recognize the two GPUs. It was able to recognize everything else. Now we're going to plug it in and we're going to the moon. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more.